AWS wasn't born in a boardroom or a garage. It was created to solve Amazon's own massive IT challenges. Understanding why it was created and how it solved the problem it was facing helps understand why AWS services work the way they do. There are seven core AWS services that you need to master when starting out using AWS for web development. But to understand them in detail, we first need to understand the big picture, AWS's why. Because when I first started using AWS services in 2010, I experienced a kind of culture shock. I was used to thinking in physical infrastructure, in whole servers with CPU and storage, and in bays and switches but there's none of that when using AWS. And that is due to their origin story. So it makes sense to explore it, understanding its implications, what they are for the services and how we use them. You see, AWS began way back around the year 2000 when the company wanted to launch a service called Merchant.com. The goal was to allow other retailers like Target or M&S to build e-commerce websites on top of Amazon's technology, except that it was a lot harder than they thought. Andy Jesse, who was AWS's CEO at the time, and who's now Amazon's CEO, explains. When we went to deliver that solution to those companies, it turned out to be way harder and way more time consuming than any of us imagined. And that's because we had uh, really kind of jumbled up a bunch of parts of our platform growing as fast as we did the first eight years. And to deliver these through APIs, which is the way that these companies wanted to consume them, it took a lot of decoupling and a lot of work that we just hadn't thought about before. When Amazon launched in, tw- in 1994, they didn't really plan for future requirements. Their server code had become an interconnected mess. So the engineer tasked with building Merchant.com started by untangling that mess into isolated and well-documented APIs. That helped develop Merchant.com, but it also made life easier for the internal developer audience too. So much so that it set the standard for a much more organized and disciplined way of developing tools internally. And we also then decided that every single internal development team inside the company would be expected to have well-documented, hardened APIs so that the teams could consume each other's services without having to talk to each other. That was a big fundamental shift that happened around the year 2000. And then all of the internal teams inside of Amazon expected to be able to consume their peer internal development team services in that way. This DNA, this mindset is baked into every AWS service. It's why they're so flexible and powerful and why I had my initial culture shock when I started using them. But that culture shock wasn't just about how the APIs worked. It was also about the scope that they offered. Why are they so low level, so basic? Every business at Amazon has a set of tenets, and those tenets are really a set of guidelines that are supposed to help guide you when you have hard decisions to make. Some of the tenets there are that we're going to build low-level, highly flexible building blocks. We weren't going to make a lot of decisions for developers. Um, We weren't going to be paternal and tell developers what they could or could not do. And that was based on our own experience of having made a lot of these decisions for developers inside of Amazon as we were building out our own architectures and realized that there were so many other use cases that we didn't think about when we made those decisions that we really prohibited or slowed down our ability to, to pursue. As the Stack Overflow surveys show, AWS is a dominant platform in software engineering, and you can't afford to ignore it. To have a successful career as a developer in web technologies, you need to have a solid grasp of how and why AWS functions the way it does, both in general and in practice. Understanding AWS's philosophy is key to effectively using the platform. AWS's history and the tenets that guided their development explains why AWS structured their services as basic building blocks that function together in a very decoupled way. That structure is both the reason why AWS were able to capture such a large part of the market and what gave me such a culture shock when I started using AWS in 2010. But now that we've explored the bigger picture, it's time to go deeper and to better understand the seven core AWS services that you can't afford to ignore. And that's the subject of this next video. I'll see you there.